Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. It is Tuesday, February 14th. So I just found this article. I didn't tell stuff I was doing this, uh -oh. but it's, uh, uh, <laughs> Google is highlighting search trends related to the romantic holiday of Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. And this week, in the days leading up to today, Valentine's Day, the top searches for romantic evenings by state are out. And for here in Texas, it is a drive in theater. Okay, that's considered a romantic item. Oh, okay. Based on search results. Other states, not so much. Rage rooms are the big deal in Idaho for a romantic What? Night. Um, <laughs> axe throwing in Michigan and also in Connecticut. Um, huh. In Virginia, they're into museums. And then uh, a couple others, like, uh, let's see, Kansas, uh, mini golf. Okay. Arcade's also another big one. Interesting. And then uh, in the state of Utah, I didn't know they were known for their aquariums, but apparently aquariums are a big deal romantically. Wow. Which one's the rage room again? Uh, let's see. That would be Idaho and uh, let's see, at least one other state maybe. Yeah, but right here funny. in Texas, we're really into drive-in movie theaters. Yeah. If you can find one. Yeah. And I don't think there's one here in town anymore, but you can go to New Braunfels. Oh, they have the that's Stars right. and Stripes drive-in. Yeah movie theater. But that the, is romantic. The only problem is you never know this time of year what the weather's going to do. I mean, we That's all kind of cautiously true. open the door true. in the morning and stick a hand out and kind of go, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's going to be one of those weeks, too, because there's a lot going on this week. And by the way, if I took my wife to a museum for Valentine's Day, I don't think that would go over very well. Probably. I don't know what's going on in Virginia. Or a rage room. Or a rage room. <laughs> or axe throwing. Of those. It's, it's good to see that we're we still, you know, pretty traditional. Yes. <laughs> I like the drive-in idea better. Uh, yes. It is going to be a little bit windy today if that is in your plans. We're going to see some gusty winds, uh, especially as we get into mid-morning and by lunchtime. Let me show you the big picture here. We we did get some, well, I don't even want to call it rain overnight. It was more like drizzle, very light stuff. That is moving out. Dry air is starting to shift in. And we're going to get a good westerly wind today. Yes, there's a front that has passed by, but it doesn't mean it's going to be cooler today because of that west wind. It tends to warm us up quite a bit, and that's exactly what we're looking for this afternoon. Wind gusts already starting to kick in. We're seeing that around Rock Springs, gusting to 22, gusting to 26 in Junction. No wind gusts just yet here in San Antonio, but that does change, I think, here fairly shortly. Starting to see some gusts up around 12, 14 miles per hour here and there. Here's the wind gust forecast. I think we could see some gusts 30, maybe 35 through mid-morning, and then it starts to taper off as we head into the afternoon and into this evening. So if you have evening plans, it may not be all that bad. Here's a look at that Valentine's Day forecast. 78 the forecast high, mostly sunny, and there are those west Julia winds 15 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. As I said, things change rapidly this week. More changes on the way tomorrow. Another front. Some cooler temperatures, too. We'll talk all about that here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to RJ. Hopefully the morning commute is going smoothly. Yeah, Justin. You know what? People have been showing some love to one another on Valentine's Day on the roads. Nothing too crazy going on right now to speak of. As we take a look at our TransGuide traffic cameras, you saw a shot of there at 37 Goliad. Here we have 410 at Cherry Ridge. Traffic moving along pretty smooth in this area. Let's show you the citywide map. And again, uh, for the most part, no major incidents or crashes to speak of right now. Just a couple of uh, busy areas, kind of in our normal kind of areas that we see throughout the morning. Uh, did want to mention that they are clearing up a couple of different things here. A crash that was reported on the eastbound lanes at Zarzamora Street. Uh, but I uh, just looked at, tr at the TransGuide camera and things look pretty smooth in that area there. And as, if we go a little bit further north, we had mentioned at 830 during um, uh, our traffic there that the eastbound lanes at Jackson Keller, uh, there was a crash there as well. But as we take you back outside, you can see right there, Loop 410, Jackson Keller, things looking pretty smooth in that area. And uh, yeah, there's the one there, 90 at Zarzamora. Again, things looking pretty good. Uh, hopefully everyone stays safe out there on the roadways and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Ditto, buddy. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, RJ. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. At least three people have been killed and another five injured in a shooting at Michigan State University last night. The shooting took place in two separate locations on campus. The suspect, a 43-year-old man, was found dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound a few hours later. Police believe there was only one suspect. For now, the motive behind the shooting is not clear. The new consumer price index was released this morning. It showed a 0.5% increase in January. That translates into a 6.4% annual growth rate. The Federal Reserve is determined to keep fighting inflation, so the report is expected to harden their position on raising interest rates. 
The Biden White House has started a government-wide effort focused on what's been flying above the U.S. and has been shot down by the military. At least four unidentified airborne crafts were neutralized in just over a week. A full Senate classified briefing is scheduled for tomorrow. As of yesterday, the U.S. was not actively tracking any more unidentified flying objects. Teen girls in the U.S. experienced record levels of violence, sadness, and suicide risk in recent years. That is according to the CDC's biannual Youth Risk Behavior Survey. The responses offer the first look at trends since the start of the pandemic, which have increased dramatically over the past 10 years. Nearly half a million children's activity gyms have been recalled due to a potential choking hazard. The problem with this silver lining cloud activity gym made by Skip Hop lies within the cloud decoration that clips onto it. It has three raindrops that dangle from it by ribbons. Those raindrops can detach and then become choking hazards. Local artist Jesse Trevino passed away yesterday after a long battle with cancer. Trevino made a name for himself in the art world at a young age. He won awards and shared his passion throughout the Alamo City. Some of his more famous pieces include the mural at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center and the nine-story tiled mural on the south wall of Krista Santa Rosa Children's Hospital. Three-day weekends will be the norm this fall at Lavernia ISD. A new three-year pilot program was unanimously approved at the school board meeting last night. The finer details still need to be worked out. There are several potential draft calendars under consideration. Those would affect the district's start day and holiday schedule. Lavernia ISD is also determining how long school days might be. Changes to school nutrition standards have helped reduce obesity in children. Researchers found an overall decrease in body mass index, or BMI, after standards mandated more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy products. The overall BMI decrease was seen across ages and income levels, which researchers say is significant. Happy Valentine's Day! The holiday is believed to have started long ago. It derived from the feast for the patron Saint Valentine. Historians tell the story of one saint who married couples in secret to prevent men from going to war. In the 1400s, the day became associated with romance. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your morning headlines, the driver of a truck that went on a rampage on New York streets has a history of violence. And the U.S. government is known as being uh, slow at times, but some hurricane victims are really getting frustrated with their pace. Plus an emotional trip to the Super Bowl, and it had nothing to do with winning or losing the game. Our David Sears is here with all the stories. This morning, morning, David. Morning. morning. And in keeping with the Valentine theme, the NFL and Make-A-Wish showing a lot of love to some folks, and we're going to meet one of the folks who got to go to the Super Bowl. Ooh, what an experience that was. First, let's start with this. The driver of this U-Haul van driving to jail in New York City, but we can see what he did that might send chills up your spine still to this day, driving that U-Haul down the streets and then down the sidewalk, people diving for cover. He wiped out a guy on his bicycle. He hit a number of people, eight injured, one dead. One witness described the scene as a half a mile of madness. Witnesses feared for their lives in that moment. And I see the truck is coming very fast. Perfect. I jump, you know, the, with the truck, if he hit me, I'm be dead. This guy with the new truck doesn't wait for the red light, doesn't stop, doesn't slow down. And all of a sudden, he hit him so hard that the bike spin like three times. I thought it was an action film. I never saw anything like that in my entire life. The driver, 62-year-old Wang Soar, his driving destruction lasted about 40 minutes, according to police. So far, an act of terrorism has been ruled out, but he has had some run-ins with police. According to reports, he has been behind bars before for acts of violence and suffers from mental illness. The wheels of government turn slow, and it's getting pretty frustrating for victims of Hurricane Ian that hit Florida last September. That hurricane left partially or completely destroyed homes in its path. Residents have been living in their vehicles or in old RVs. There are families in tents. Some are back in their partially destroyed house because their rental assistance ran out. Most of these folks have been approved for a new trailer by FEMA, but yet those temporary homes sit in a lot unoccupied. 3,000 approved. Only 200 delivered. Talk about frustration. But FEMA says there's no red tape they have to work through. I don't have a choice. It's here on the street. It breaks you and physically, emotionally, you're drained, you're exhausted. Do you think more needs to be done to cut red tape to be able to deliver these trailers now? We don't have any issues with red tape at the moment. 
Mm, they got other issues, though. FEMA says they should get the trailers delivered by the middle of March. And finally, another feel good story about the Super Bowl. Meet Gavin Meyer from Missouri, one of thousands of cheering fans there to cheer on the Kansas City Chiefs and witness their big win over the Eagles in Super Bowl 57. Gavin suffers from a form of muscular dystrophy, and make a wish made it possible for Gavin to be one of 16 who made the trip to Arizona for Super Bowl weekend. He got to meet some of the NFL's greatest and just have a great time. Manny Jones is now his BFF. Gavin got to be on the field. He made friends and memories he'll never forget. He's happy all the time, but this has just took him to another level. Really helps us know that someone cares and that they're with us through this battle. Yeah, great to see his Chiefs win. So that's it. See, look at him. He's like enjoying the whole weekend. That is awesome that Make-A-Wish and the NFL get together to, to get, because you know tickets ain't cheap. But, no. you know, they bring in these, uh, bring in these folks and, and have a one, they wonderful make it, time. They make it like happen. Blast. Yeah, special so, weekend. So no that's doubt. pretty cool. You got to go to Top Golf and do all, all kinds of stuff. That's all, so. all kinds of fun. Great, great awesome, stuff. Awesome yeah. experience. And it's just one. So there you go. <laughs> Led by Texas Tech's Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Texas Tech's. I, I like how you put that in there. <laughs> Thank you, David. Future Board of Regent for the Texas Tech System. 909, <laughs> 65 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. The latest on an activist organization's petition to change some city charters. What San Antonio voters should know before the May election plus. On this Valentine's Day, we are talking about a program working to help hearts around the Alamo City. We're going to explain in just a few moments. And before we go to break, some Valentine's Day trivia for you. Approximately how many cards are exchanged on Valentine's Day every year. I almost said Valentine's. Valentine's <laughs> Day every year. Is it 500 million, 250 million, 1 billion, hmm. or 2 billion? Well, the answer after the break. Before we went to break, we asked you a Valentine's Day trivia question. Approximately how many cards are exchanged every year for Valentine's Day? The answer, if you guessed it, is C, 1 billion cards annually. That's a lot of love. And the tradition of getting married on the Bear County Courthouse steps continues this Valentine's Day. This was the midnight ceremony. So this is a free service provided by the Bear County Clerk's Office. And while he didn't get married, the Spurs Coyote did make a special appearance at the ceremony. The next group of weddings will take place at 10 a.m. And then there are two other ceremonies today at noon and 2 p.m. Well, national organization is working to help students and families around San Antonio eat healthier. Max Massey joins us live from Stonewall Flanders Elementary School on the southwest side to tell us more about Brighter Bites. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. This is such an awesome program. We're going to help families and students around our area. Joined here with Elizabeth. So those who don't know, what is Brighter Bites? So Brighter Bites is a national nutrition education program that provides fresh fruits and vegetables and nutrition education to families in elementary schools. So how exactly does it work? Do you guys just pull up with like a huge truck with all the fresh fruits and veggies? So essentially, yes, we bring the fruits and vegetables directly to the schools. And then with the use of parent volunteers and staff, we bag all of those fruits and vegetables and get those to the kiddos at dismissal time after school. Um, and then we're also delivering nutrition education in the classroom. Why is this so important? here in San Antonio? Well, we know that in San Antonio, access to food is a big issue. And so what we're trying to do is provide access to healthier options. So fresh fruits and vegetables for students and their families to try at home. What results have you seen from this program? So what we do know is that families are making healthier choices. We know that they are choosing fruits and vegetables at snack times, and they're also uh, choosing healthier snacks. Who are you guys partnered with? How can people get involved? So right now we are partnered with um, Harlandale ISD and we are in six of their elementary schools and we hope to continue partnering with Harlandale and expand into the rest of their elementary schools in the coming year. But we would love to be in as many school districts here in San Antonio as possible. Not only are you helping short term, but what are some of the long term effects of introducing these fresh fruits and vegetables to children and students and families at a young age? Yeah, so we, we start early for a reason. We want these behavior changes to stick. So as we are introducing these fresh fruits and vegetables, these kiddos are being exposed to them early on and they're keeping these healthy choices as they get older and they continue to eat these fruits and vegetables um, as their snack options and making those healthier choices. 
All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Guys, if you have any questions about the program, how to get involved, what comes next, we're going to have all those answers coming up in the news at noon. And, of course, KSAT.com. Steph, Mark, back to you guys. Thanks, Max. Let's go outside with live cam. Warm hearts, Aww. cold memories today. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> two years ago, do you remember this? Uh, maybe we don't want to remember it. Uh, two years ago on this day mm -hmm. is when our big freeze hit here in San Antonio, really all over Texas, the power outages. It's a lot of bad memories, but we don't want to let you know this day in weather history. It was two years ago, exactly two years ago on this day. That that video there on the left, mm -hmm. that was me walking into work. Oh my goodness. Morning, oh yeah, walking down Valentine's kind of behind day. the station towards. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and I was wondering, where do I live? This is not San Antonio. <laughs> you weren't sure, what? You, I was, you were thinking Twin Cities, maybe Chicago. Yeah, I, I was like blizzard conditions. It was, it was strange. Uh, we had snow, of course, this was, once uh, the clouds cleared, it, it was pretty, but then things got obviously not so nice with the loss of power. But anyway, uh, two years ago on this day, that was what we were dealing with. Not the case today. In fact, it'll be fairly warm. Here's why. We've got an area of low pressure moving through parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. Out ahead of it, we've got lots of showers and some storms well off to our north and east. We just got a little bit of drizzle out of it. But this front is moving through, and behind it, we'll get westerly winds. This front does not really cool us down. It just brings the gusty winds and dry air. Look at these wind advisories. They stretch from most of Texas uh, out west, and then you got a high wind warnings into parts of New Mexico and parts of the Panhandle, where I think we could see some wind gusts today up to 60 miles per hour around Lubbock and Amarillo. That's going to pick up some blowing dust for sure. And then you got the red flag warnings where we are. What does that mean? Well. Uh, it's not just pink for Valentine's Day. Uh, it's how we signify the fact that uh, we're going to get some very gusty winds and then on top of that, some very low humidity. Obviously, we did get a little bit of moisture here in San Antonio this morning, but folks out west did not get much out of this. And so there is a legit fire threat there today in these counties shaded in pink. Well, westerly winds 15 to 25 gusts maybe up to 35 even 40 in some cases. Here's a look at the forecast wind gust and I think the highest gusts really are going to be this morning through about uh, early afternoon and then they'll start to come down some. This is noontime showing some gusts close to 26 here in San Antonio but out west a little bit stronger gusting at 30 in Lake Uvalde, Del Rio and then by the afternoon yes the winds start to subside some still breezy though around dinner time we'll still get some gusts around 20 maybe 25 before those winds really fall off tonight. You combine that with the lack of humidity, the relative humidity, and you start to get into that fire danger zone. And I mentioned out west, they just I have not gotten much precipitation at all. So uh, obviously outdoor burning, not a good idea today, any of that sort of stuff, uh, because uh, things can go up quickly. Here's a look at the dew points and they're falling off. So Dew point is at 60 right now, 60 in Hondo. That number changes quickly. That dry air is moving in from the west on those westerly winds. And you'll see these numbers drop throughout the day. Right now, 65 west southwesterly winds have kicked in at 13 miles per hour. Here's a case that 12 hour Valentine's Day forecast. 70 at noontime, mostly sunny. And then up to 78 by 4 o'clock. Westerly winds at about 13 miles per hour and gusty. And then tonight, we get the temperatures in the 60s, 67 at 8 o'clock, 64 at 9 p.m. And I do want to talk about the next couple of days because things change again. Yes, we have dry air today into tonight, but by tomorrow morning, we start to see the dew point increase again. And we're going to get higher dew points by tomorrow. So it just changes really on a dime here. And that's going to lead to some fog, I think, as we get into tomorrow morning. So the forecast for today, mostly sunny and then more clouds, patchy fog tomorrow morning to start. And then we get some clearing skies by the afternoon, which will lead to some very warm temperatures. Tomorrow's our warmest day. And then as we get into Wednesday, here comes another front. This is overnight Wednesday into Thursday. Get a thin line of showers. Really don't think we get much out of it. Some clouds still hanging around on Thursday, but Thursday will be a much cooler day. So let's. Uh, show you on the seven day forecast how it all plays out. Windy today, 78, 82 Wednesday, tomorrow, our warmest day, as I said. 59, though, on Thursday, there's the change. Small chance for shower with the front. And then down to 31 by Friday morning, 56 on Friday, 60 Saturday, 72 Sunday, and then back in the upper 70s for President's Day. 
So we are all over the place in the seven-day forecast. A variety of temperatures. A variety of weather, just like you would expect in February. That's we have a true. rocky relationship with Mother Nature this time of year. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Yes, that's for but sure. But we're still talking, so there's yes. hope. Yes. 921, <laughs> 65 degrees. Coming up next, a look at the new Ant-Man movie coming out on Friday and what Marvel fans can expect from this film. Before we go to break, here's another trivia question for you. Mm. All right, how many heart-shaped boxes of candy are sold for Valentine's each year? Is it 20 million, 25 million, more than 30 million, more than 35 million? Stephanie will have your answer oh. after the break. <laughs> Any guesses? 30? Welcome back, it's 924. So before the break, we asked you a Valentine's Day trivia question. How many heart-shaped boxes of candy are sold for Valentine's Day each year? The answer? is D, so that's more than 35 million. Wow. I guessed 30. Wow, they were raking in the cash, aren't they? Yes, they are. Valentine's continues to be big business. Well, the newest Marvel Cinematic Universe adventure, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, arrives in theaters this week. CNN's Rick Domagella shares what one movie guide says this film will do for Marvel fans and what to expect. Everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man! No, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is about a different phylum of anthropomorphic arthropod action heroes. I think Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, uh, it could really help Marvel right now. I think a lot of people agree, even the biggest Marvel fans, that Phase 4 of Marvel was kind of a mixed bag. And what I think that okay. this film has the potential to do is Avenger. set the course right in the Marvel Call Cinematic the Universe. You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? The film introduces new villain Kang the Conqueror. Who we saw a version of in one season one. one of the Loki television series. Now that version of Kang the Conqueror is not the version that we're going to see You're in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This is Kang the Conqueror going full oh. conqueror, so to speak. I didn't lose the suit. You have a suit? Wait, you have a suit? I know how to take care of myself, okay? Trust me, I'm pretty good at it by now. Ouch. Quantumania continues plot lines from the Ant-Man movie series and events from Avengers right. Endgame. Scott Lang's, you know, sort of thinking of the sense of loss he had of not spending time with his daughter. His daughter grew up while he was gone. And and his his feelings family. about that play a major Never part in go. this story. Your daughter built a subatomic Hubble telescope in a basement. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. <laughs> Time right now at 926, 65 degrees. More head on GMSA at 9. Including David and RJ's take on the Spurs loss to the Cavs last night and what they think it's going to take for the Spurs to break this losing streak that they're on right now. But before that, White Group is asking the Texas Supreme Court to intervene and propose changes to some San Antonio City Charter amendments. Looking ahead to city elections in May, a group is asking the Texas Supreme Court to intervene. It's in response to an activist organization's petition to change city charter, decriminalizing marijuana and abortion, among other things. Jonathan Cotto explains the latest on this developing story. The group Act for a Say got 20,000 signatures it needs to put a charter amendment in front of voters. It contains uh, several elements, uh, including ostensibly decriminalizing uh, marijuana, decriminalizing abortion, uh, banning uh, choke holes, uh, no-knock warrants, and uh, appointing a justice policy director. This week, the city council is expected to sign off to put the proposition on the May 6 ballot. But now there's a legal challenge. The Texas Alliance for Life that has submitted a writ of mandamus to the Texas Supreme Court. And what that means is they're trying to compel a city, uh, the city uh, to divide up that justice policy into separate propositions. It's unclear whether the Texas Supreme Court will take up the issue. The statement to Act 4 SA says the Justice Charter all falls under single subject rule. Every piece touched on criminal justice and more specifically police reform. Signers of the petition signed it for it to be on the ballot as a single amendment and the policy was written as a single amendment. The council has decided that the proper way to put it before the voters is as presented to the people signing the peti petition. Act 4 SA says the changes would reduce unnecessary arrests, mitigate racial bias, and save scarce public resources. 
But the proposition faces another big challenge, current state law. Uh, a good number of the elements of the proposition are contrary to state law. To the extent they're contrary to state law, we will not enforce them. Uh, so that's a key thing for the uh, viewers to know. Regardless, in the past, the Bear County District Attorney has said his office will not prosecute abortion-related cases or low-level marijuana offenses. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with live cam. Not too bad, 65 degrees, the sun's out now. Looking pretty nice this Valentine's morning. Pretty incredible considering just about two or three hours ago it was drizzly and kind of damp. Things have changed very quickly. We have some drier air starting to work in. It's going to be a pretty nice Valentine's Day other than it will be windy. We'll get some gusts up around 30 miles per hour. I want to show you a picture. We talked about it earlier. This was two years ago. Universal City, look at that. Snow covering the streets. Blue skies, that was nice, but uh, uh, man, what a stretch we had two years ago. The big freeze, we are starting that anniversary. Of course, it continued for about a week or so with the loss of power and those kind of things. But anyway, we appreciate the picture so much. If you have any memories from two years ago when sent it in, please do so. Here's a look at today's polling count. Ash is moderate, 160. Molds are low at 390. And looking at the current wind gusts, still not too bad, but they're starting to pick up. We're starting to see gusts out west. I think very shortly we'll see some gusts of around 25, 30 miles per hour, picking up a little bit more throughout the morning here in San Antonio. So far, not windy yet, but we do think it will be. Uh, some gusts around 30, 35 here in town. 78, the forecast high temperature. Be a warm Valentine's Day, but even warmer tomorrow. We've got 80s in the forecast before a big drop of the cold front. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And our San Antonio Spurs cannot snap out of their losing streak. Spurs matched a franchise record and not in a good way. David and RJ are back with a breakdown of what's happening on this rodeo road trip. <laughs> David? Oh, it's pretty basic. They're not scoring more <laughs> points than the other team. Mm -hmm. Oh. All, All right, right, guys. We'll guys. See you later. <laughs> like, guys. A, like a coach pop the press old, uh, conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who did call it? Was that John Madden who said, we just need to score more points than the other team? <laughs> um, yeah, oh, it's been man. brutal here, David. 13 this straight is... losses to match the franchise record for losing streaks. It, the 88-89 team, David, do you remember that team? The 88-89 team? Uh, yeah, there was. Was David Robinson the David Rob team? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this was yeah. before Duncan, but. Was that the year yeah. David Robinson was hurt? He got and hurt the year before Duncan came. Yeah. I know that. That's when Pop and took over. Yeah, and then, no, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was a whole that different was, deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, it's been a long time. It was a weird, uh, was a weird year. A losing streak of this yeah. nature here. And uh, latest loss here to the Cleveland Cavs. So here's what's, here's what's so weird mm -hmm. is, is we look at the standings, and we used to look at the standings to see how far <laughs> the Spurs were out of first place. Right. Now yeah. we're looking at the standings to see how far Ooh. the Spurs are from the bottom. From last place. Because we want them to get – it's like this is just – it's so anti – root for the Spurs. It's like, yeah, we're rooting for the Spurs, but uh, so you're looking at the standings and Charlotte lost last night, so that helps San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. that just keeps San Antonio closer to the bottom mm -hmm. and closer to that uh, number one draft. It's like, that's it's just not, it's, it's not right. It's, uh, it's weird. Yeah, so what like we're that. looking at right now is uh, Houston actually has the worst record in the league. They have 13 yeah. wins, but the Spurs are right there. 14, 14. wins for the Sp San Antonio Spurs, and uh, yeah, things were not good here. Uh, they let Donovan Mitchell score 41 points uh -huh. yesterday. Just letting all the young guys basically. Uh, Malachi Branham returned home. He's from the Akron area, had 18 points. So uh, that was a nice little bright but, spot for them. And they made all those changes, and it's like, where's oh, the yeah. roster again? The I got to get a Graham, roster out, see who's playing. Guy. I mean, they got five guys starting and never started again. I mean, it's just, it's just weird. And, mm -hmm. you know, at least Jeremy Sohan's having, having some Sohan's fun. And, yeah. And yeah. he did pretty good. And Kelton Johnson. So there's two guys we know. Yeah. So um, that. We're still learning. We're still <laughs> yeah. trying to still figure this out. You know, what? Well, here's amazing is here. the young team last night mm -hmm. against the Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. who playoff team, these guys cut it to like five or six with like seven minutes yeah. left, six minutes yeah. left, something like that. Well, they were down and by 21, they, something yeah, like that, and got it all the way down. Close, like, uh, and but, here we go. Yeah, but uh, cannot come away with the win here. And uh, as you mentioned, they've been competitive, David. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, these guys are yeah. obviously showing some fight, so that is good. I mean, not getting blown out in too many of these games. but uh, And that's yeah, the thing. Know. We've always said they're fun to watch because they don't give up. They don't quit. Mm -hmm. They keep – I mean, yeah, they're making mistakes because they're young guys, but, man, they fight to the end. They don't, they don't give up, and they try to get – most of the time they get down – 
10, 15, 20, they come right back and, yep. and make a game of it at the end, and you get all excited, and then it's like, ah. But then you look at the standings and go, okay, well, they're closer yeah, to they're that, uh, that top that top draft pick. So Speaking of, uh, next game here, uh, another battle of the bottom dwellers here. The Hornets <laughs> are also in the run for uh, one of these bottom three spots here. Again, the teams with the three worst records all have the best percentage of getting the number one pick. So they're all going to have about a 14% yeah. percent percentage. Right now, Charlotte's out of the three. three. They're, they're, yeah. they're the fourth team. Right. The fourth worst. Yeah. So. Houston, San Antonio, Detroit, <laughs> and Charlotte. There you go. What, what, what are we doing uh, here? It is uh, it's it's very weird. bizarre. Yeah. yeah and, as, and like uh, Charlotte's like two games better than the Spurs in the win column. So yeah. the Spurs... <laughs> Let's just, I don't, I don't know. Um, next season. Yeah, next, next, season. Season. next season. Exactly. Season. That's what we're looking know. forward to. Uh, 24 games left in the season, That's David. The worst it. record Spurs have ever had was 20 and 62. Well, Do you think they're about they, to top that. Okay. So, <laughs> wow. They may not, uh, they may win one or two more. Well, see, here's Five the thing. Out of 24. Uh, real, real quick, because we've got Charlotte tomorrow night, and then they have the Rockets twice. Oh, and the boy. Rockets are oh, worse than the Spurs. The Rockets are on the 10. bottom, so that's going to be, and that's a home and home. It's a back to back home and home. Wow. So that's going to be that's going to really be weird when they when the they Austin get ready to play Spurs going to play in that game. Uh, they might they might bring them down. Oh, no. So who knows? Who knows? Well, yeah, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> All right, have, this, happy Valentine's Day. Game, yeah, one more game left before the <laughs> All-Star break. Well, and this allows yeah. us a perfect transition, guys. Okay. So since you're talking about it being heartbreaking to be a Spurs fan right now, at least we have some football to look forward to. XFL season starts this Sunday with the San Antonio Brahmas. If you're new to town, that's a bull. And if you mess with the bull, you get the... Thank you, everybody. No you can win two tickets for field-level tickets to the game. All you have to do is be a KSET insider and submit your name on the sweepstakes entry form. It's free to enter, and the deadline to do so is 11 a.m. on Thursday, so you still have time, and you can find more information on our website, KSET.com. Yeah. and I are going to be there Sunday, uh -huh. oh, okay, so we'll yeah. be hanging yes. out with some of the insiders, so you can come down and join us, and we'll get your perspective on, on the Brahmas and the okay. NFL. Nice. So, there you go. so it's not go. horns up, it's horns yeah. forward, right, guys? Ooh, ooh. Is that what I'm there hearing? There we go. Yeah. Like that. Horns forward. Well, both. We, we don't forget Brahma those time. either. <laughs> 939, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. If you're one of the many thinking of adding a chicken coop to your home to save money on eggs, well, there are a few things to consider. When we come back, Patty Santos not only shares how to care for the chickens, but what it means for your taxes and home valuation. Want some more Valentine's Day trivia? Okay, here you go, staff. True <laughs> or false, men purchase more Valentine's Day cards than women. Ooh, I say false. Really? Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, before the break, we asked you a trivia question. True or false, men purchase more Valentine's Day cards than women ever did. And I was sure it was true. <laughs> I was <laughs> right. It's, it's false. False. Yeah, I don't believe that. False. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. that's, that's not a bad thing. Where did we get this information from? I'm asking our producer, <laughs> a, Alex. A credible Alex, source. A Q&A uh, on uh, a it's website. On our website. Our, our website. Our website. So, okay. <laughs> All right, she doesn't. She doesn't know. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. Thank you, Mark. With the rising cost of eggs, more people are thinking of keeping chickens in their backyard to save money. And Patty Santos shares some good news about what this could mean for the value of your property. How many chickens do you guys have? Uh, we got about 65-ish right now. Zachary Platt owns Behind the Oaks Farm in Shirts. He's a professional chicken and egg farmer, but he will gladly mentor any clients that will give it a try. If you can have chickens, have layers, and put them in your backyard, you know, there's no reason not to. First, he says, know your city, county, or homeowners association ordinance and how many hens are allowed. He says one hen might produce enough eggs for one or two people per household. Chickens can can eat anything. Um, obviously, they're going to be foraging for bugs and insects and nuts and seeds and grubs and all sorts of things. They'll 
need a shelter that's going to protect them from neighborhood predators. If you build that shelter, they can be seclu secured in there. So, okay. And we lock ours up at night. And here's some good news. Your chicken home will not be taxed according to the Bear County Appraisal right. District. Structures like that for non-commercial use are exempt from taxation. If you build one and it's incorrectly assessed in your valuation, you can file a protest before May 15th. Some of them are pretty extravagant from a, as an appraiser. When you look at it from the outside, it looks like it could be a living area, small casita, a big storage. Patty Santos, case at 12 News. It's all about owning a chicken. Yeah. You could also own a Chick-fil-A franchise. Their <laughs> franchise fee is about $10,000, but the process is long and difficult, I hear. Yes. But how fun would that be, though? Right? I mean, if you had the money for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. then I guess we'll just, we just want money for eggs at this point. No kidding. Yeah. It's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> it's All right, Justin's really back. Popular. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the weather today for Valentine's Day, if you have plans this evening, maybe uh, you're going on a date, whatnot, uh, looks pretty good. Just a little bit windy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. There you go, Steph. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite picture, and you can see that we've got clouds are clearing out, and uh, the rain, any sort of rain's clearing out, too. We had a few showers, really just some light drizzle overnight. That is pushing east. Now the sun is out. Yes, front came through, but we're not going to get a cool down today. In fact, with some westerly winds, it should warm up quite a bit. And as we look at the big picture here, uh, the rain and a good amount of it is uh, still falling east of Dallas, northeast Texas, eastern Oklahoma. And that system, you can see the spin right there, the comma shape. That system is moving east and northeast and away from us. In the wake of it, the drier air is starting to filter in. So dew points are in the 20s out west. We still got a dew point of 60, but that's going to change here shortly. The dew points will fall off. And we'll get two points in the 20s and 30s, I think, later this afternoon, which poses an issue because uh, with the gusty winds, dry air, we've got the fire conditions and the fire threat there, especially if you're west of San Antonio, because those areas just didn't see the precipitation last night. And I should point out that a large portion of Texas and parts of New Mexico underneath wind advisories, high wind warnings, it's going to be very windy behind the system, a very tight pressure gradient. And as uh, we look a little bit closer here, uh, you can see the red flag warnings that are in effect west of San Antonio. So this area, these areas shaded in pink, appropriate for Valentine's Day, right? Uh, winds 15 to 25, gusting to 40, and this is where we could see the, it, well, if we do see a grass fire, it's going to spread very quickly. So that's, that's the concern. Just be very careful out there. That's the bottom line. And as we look at the future cast wind gusts, uh, we're expecting gusts around 30 miles per hour, maybe a little bit higher than that out west, especially. This is noontime, by the way, for the time frame reference. And as uh, we get towards the afternoon, winds will start to calm some. And I think as we go into tonight, you'll see a lot less wind. But through the day today, gusts up to 30. And I'd say by dinner time, the gusts are more in a, ra a range of 20 to 25. And then they really do go calm overnight. There's a look outside. We can see a few clouds in the distance, but a lot of blue skies right now. 65. Dew point is at 60, as we said, with the west southwesterly wind at 13. Here's a look at the forecast temperatures. Uh, I think by this afternoon, uh, we'll be in the mid to upper 70s here in town with that westerly wind. Most everyone will be in the 70s today. So, yes, a warm Valentine's Day. Tonight, the dry air is still there, but it starts to come back in by tomorrow morning. So what I want to watch for tomorrow morning is some patchy fog, some patchy morning clouds. Temperatures will be right around 50 degrees, but don't be surprised if visibility is down as you head to work and school tomorrow. Then as we get into the afternoon, look what happens. Temperatures really skyrocket tomorrow with the clouds moving out, the sun out. This will be our warmest day up to 81 here in San Antonio, but 85 Pierce Hall, maybe close to 90 increase those springs in February. Uh, it changes again, though, because we get a front through Wednesday night into Thursday. This brings with it a small chance of a shower, but it does cool us down and it brings the winds back again. 59 on Thursday and windy. This time it's more of a northwesterly wind, so that makes it a lot chillier. 31 Friday to start and 56 by the afternoon. The weekend looks pretty good at this point. Maybe a few clouds, 60s and 70s and warm as we get into next week. Uh, but we go from 82 to 59 Wednesday and Thursday. So just a, head, a heads up. Have coats, T-shirts, mm -hmm. shorts. Everything. Everything, everything ready. Have it, have it all ready. Exactly. Okay. Will do. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now, 949, 66 degrees. And we come back, a look at a new show that's airing tonight on ABC.
953, a new show airs on ABC tonight. Well, Trent is played by the actor Raymond Rodriguez, and it follows in the television tradition of detectives like Columbo, who are a little bit different. And therein lies their charm. ABC Sandy Kenyon gives us a preview of the show. Name? Special Agent Will Trent. Ooh, fancy. Not really. Will Trent may dress in three-piece suits, but he was abandoned by his parents as a child and grew up in the foster care system. There's heart. That's a great aspect to a character that I connected with immediately. And then, you know, how do we show what he's been through? How do we show this person's traumatic childhood and do it in a way that feels authentic and also be able to kind of plant these seeds throughout so that it's intriguing for people to want to know more about him. Will has never been the popular kid, especially not in his current job with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, where colleagues resent his ability to solve cases by reading crime scenes expertly. We can teach you to see things no one else does. I'm a pretty observant guy. As a person facing dyslexia, Will has trouble writing and spelling. But Here's what I find really interesting is it's like he's not defined by these things. Will Trent is based on a series of best-selling novels featuring the character. But he is different enough Ramon Rodriguez wanted to know more about him before agreeing to this series. He's a complicated, a bit strange and a loner and so how do you sort of pull back that onion on him little by little and that, that's a lot of fun to have those conversations with writers. A strong supporting cast and complications stemming from an on again off again romance at work adds to the show's appeal. A show that newly defines the term character driven. It isn't just we solve the case and we move on. How do we learn about our characters through this case and continue that journey throughout a season? Sandy Kenyon, ABC News, New York. Latest Texas Crime Stories podcast is out. It's part two of a story our team told you about last year, the case of former Border Patrol agent Juan David Ortiz. Ortiz killed four women in the Laredo area before a long trial put him in prison for life two months ago. Hosts Eric Hernandez and Lee Waltman spoke with the only woman who survived Ortiz's attack and the victims' families, the Border Patrol serial killer, part two, out right now. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, also on Spotify and ksat.com. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, get ready for another Science with Sarah. This week, Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be visiting a group of second graders at the basis campus in the medical center where they will be making popsicle stick catapults. That's fun. So tune in for that and much more tomorrow on GMSA at 9. I love her mad scientist look there. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, that'll be fun tomorrow. Uh, and we know it'll be warm tomorrow. Uh, fairly warm today, too. 78 degrees and windy. We're already in the 60s now. 82 tomorrow after some morning fog. But then that changes because we get a front through. A small chance of a shower Wednesday night into Thursday. But high of only 59 on Thursday. Aw, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> and we love you, our viewers. Thanks for watching. Yes, have a great day, guys.